Lindsay. Go oh, hey Mark, how's it going? Very well, so what, what are you doing in the uh, in the water? Um, I'm working on the Broadway drain, I'm doing an inspection right now. So, what exactly is your job with WDBA? Uh, so I am the environmental compliance specialist, so there's a few different components to my position. Um, in the office I am looking at uh, plans that come in from contractors, making sure that they meet our environmental requirements. Uh, then in the field um, I also do uh, site inspections, uh, audits, and making sure that we are complying with our plans. So why did you decide to work in the environmental field? Well, it's, uh, it's not something that uh, was a natural choice for me, I guess to use that pun. Um, so I grew up actually in Vaughan and I studied music and after high school I had no idea what I wanted to take. I took a couple years off, I realized I loved the outdoors, I always loved working with animals and I looked around and fish and wildlife spoke to me and I haven't looked back ever since. Now, I, I think a lot of people would be surprised that a uh, construction project like this would even have environmental staff. Um, is this normal for construction projects? Um, when it comes to construction projects, you see with, uh, you'll see a lot of environmental engineers. So those people are looking at a lot of soil contaminants, stockpiles, uh, water quality. Uh, from our aspect, there is a very large component for species at risk naturalization. And so with my background of fish and wildlife, it lended nicely to this project. So I think it's a pretty unique team that we've built here and unique to the project. So do the other construction workers on the job need to have some sort of environmental training? Yes, anyone who works on site, whether it be for an hour or a year, has to go through the species at risk training. And with that, um, it's an in-classroom session and it teaches them how to react if they see wildlife on site and just housekeeping ideas, keeping things clean, making sure they're not speeding on the roadside and being aware of animals on site that may be on site. So tell me about some of the environmental measures that WDBA has undertaken here on the Canadian Port of Entry. So there were a lot of requirements. This project is actually exempt from some legislation under the Bridge to Strength and Trade Act, but as a requirement, uh, we have over four and a half kilometers of exclusion fence that has been uh, constructed on a, around the site. Uh, this helps keep animals into their natural environment off the construction site. As well, behind me, uh, the Broadway drain was also part of our mitigation. And and this was to help with uh, fish habitat offsetting measures. So making sure that the, the wildlife species in the water are, are protected. So what's the most unusual thing that's happened to you and on the job other than a helicopter coming over you as you're being filmed? <laughs> so with that, um, I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure uh, Anything unusual out of the ordinary has happened. You know, people and animals all do weird things. Um, always expect the unexpected on these sites. But uh, I think for uh, the average person who doesn't have a wildlife background, they don't expect to find all of these species on site. So they're surprised when an animal will nest on an active construction site because it is suitable habitat for them. So it's more uh, teaching people about what to expect. Lindsay, why did you uh, decide to work with uh, WDBA? Well, they offered me the job and um, it was a unique opportunity. Um, it wasn't so much for me, uh, the project in its scope, but uh, what's going to happen during the build process. So making sure that this project is um, being implemented and also being aware of the wildlife and the natural heritage protection aspect. One last question, and this is a perfect one for you. If you could be any animal in the world, what would it be? Well, I would have to say it would have to be one that does not do well in captivity. Um, I like being outdoors. Um, 2018 is the year of the bird. Um, and another species at risk that was almost at extinction was the whooping crane. So maybe I would select that. Um, this is actually a great success story of a species that was on the brink of extinction. And with uh, collaborative efforts in conservation and breeding, they now have a breeding population of about 400 individuals that uh, migrate between Texas and Northern Alberta, Southern Northwest Territories. Well, with that, I'll let you get back to the water. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks, Mark.